What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to take a look at how you can become a healthcare analyst. Now, if you don't know my background, I worked at a small healthcare analytics company as my first data analyst job. After that, I worked for a really big company called Amerisource Bergen. It was now changed to Sincora, uh, but I always call it Amerisource Bergen because that's what it was called when I worked there. But I worked there for about three and a half, almost four years. I was a junior data analyst, then a data analyst, and then I was promoted to a manager of data analytics. Now, within those years at Amerisource Bergen, I was on a hiring team for about a year and a half. And so I would interview and be on a kind of a panel for interviewing people who were trying to become data analysts, healthcare analysts, business analysts. And then when I became a manager of analytics, I was the hiring manager, so I didn't have a team, it was just me. And I would hire data engineers and data scientists and data analysts to be on my team. And so I think I have a pretty good understanding of what hiring managers are looking for and how you can actually break into healthcare analytics. Let's get started by talking about kind of the elephant in the room. Do you have to have experience in healthcare to become a healthcare analyst? The answer is no. And in fact, I helped hire some people who had no background in healthcare analytics, but they were coming to work at our healthcare company and they just had really good experience with the skills. They had good experience in other areas and it was pretty transferable. So we knew that they would do a pretty good job. They just had to learn the domain. Now, that was not always the case. I will say that typically we really wanted people who had a healthcare background, whether they worked at a different company, they had experience as a nurse, or they had some type of background with their education in healthcare, because healthcare is really, really complex. And so having to teach someone the domain knowledge, and maybe they have good technical skills, but they have no domain knowledge at all, sometimes can be more difficult than trying to teach someone the technical skills, and they already know a lot of the domain knowledge. So just keep that in mind. You don't absolutely have to, but it is harder to get into healthcare analytics or work at a healthcare company if you have no experience or domain knowledge at all. So if you have no experience in healthcare analytics, I'm gonna talk a little bit later about how you can make that up, how you can get experience working with some of the data that you might use as a healthcare analyst and put projects on your resume that are directly geared toward healthcare. And that can be very, very helpful. Now going forward, we're gonna talk about some of the skills that you need as a healthcare analyst. I'm gonna talk about how you can make yourself as desirable as possible to get a healthcare analyst position. We'll talk about some things like portfolio and projects, and then we'll also talk about some of the companies that hire a lot of healthcare analysts. So let's start with the skills that you need. Now, before I dive into the technical, something that almost every company when I was interviewing and when I would conduct interviews that I would ask is, do you actually have experience or are you familiar with EHR systems? Now, EHR stands for Electronic Health Record. These are systems to track patient data. You will see this at any hospital that you go to and they collect a ton of information in there. And all of these systems are kind of similar in what they track, but they do things very differently. For example, I worked with a system called Epic. That's a really popular EHR. I also worked a lot with Allscripts. Those are two that I just, I now have ingrained in my head forever. But I had experience using those in some internships and some things that I did before I broke into the data side of things. That's back when I was trying to become a doctor and a nurse and I was working and interning at these hospitals. I got experience using those things. And when I started applying for different jobs, they almost always asked me, do I have experience using these? And when I said yes, it always went a lot better. Every single time they were like, okay, good, because we need someone who knows that. So before I get into the technical, the domain knowledge of understanding what an EHR system is, you should look it up, you should go online, Google it, see if you can download some free version or see how these work. You need to know what they are, kind of how they work and how the data is in these systems. You don't have to dive super deep into this and go and work at an actual hospital and use the EHR system, but if you have some working knowledge of how it works, how these EHR systems actually interact with patients and doctors, that is very valuable. So I always recommend that if you have some experience or you've looked into these things and you feel like you have a really good grasp of these EHR systems to put it on your resume because that is something that they will specifically look for. And in fact, it's so popular that they have certifications for Epic. I actually got one way back in the day. This was like seven years ago. I never ever used it, but it just was something I got through my company. And so I have an Epic certification that I got many years ago. And if my, you know, future employer had used Epic, that would have been really valuable. And a lot of companies do, but they used all scripts. And so it was just a little bit different, but I had EHR experience on my resume and I cannot express how important that is. I know I'm talking a lot about it, but I promise you, you need some EHR something on your resume. I'm trying to put it out there so that you are aware of it, so you know of it and you can do it. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. 
The next things are more technical skills. So these are gonna be things like Excel, SQL, a data visualization tool like Power BI and Tableau, and then maybe a programming language like R or Python. So let me break those down a little bit. So Excel is just at every company ever. You can manipulate data in it, you can aggregate data and do a ton of stuff within Excel, but you also use it to communicate with doctors or managers or different people who may not be as data dependent as you are. And so it makes it really easy because most people know how to use Excel at least a little bit. The next thing is SQL. Now SQL stands for a structured query language. You also have SQL databases, which can store massive amounts of data, way more than Excel can. And these SQL databases are very, very common at a lot of different industries and companies that work within healthcare. And so here you can query tons of patient data or insurance data or pharmaceutical data or all this data, and you can query it and return it and dive into the data. And whether they have an actual SQL database or they're using something like a CRM, which is kind of like an online database if you want to really simplify it, but whatever system they're using, most likely they're using some flavor or type of SQL. And so I highly recommend knowing SQL. Those two skills are probably the most important, but then data visualization is just a part of analytics as a whole. So knowing something like Tableau or Power BI are very, very valuable to have on your resume. Although not every company is gonna use that specific tool, they'll have some different flavor. They'll have some different, uh, you know, small proprietary product that they use at their company. But if you know data visualization, you can pretty much transfer it to any of these different tools that they might use. The last thing was R or Python. Now I know both because I've been using it in my actual job and I worked on a team that used R so I had to learn it. But then I use Python for kind of some personal stuff and some personal or you know projects that I worked at within the company. Both are very valuable. I think personally that Python is more ubiquitous. You're gonna see it at more companies. But if you really like the statistics side of things, R tends to be a little bit more statistics heavy and easier to use, I would say. And so if you really love the statistical side of things, R is great. But if you want a more general purpose programming language, Python is also great. I will give a plug to myself here because I have free tutorials on everything I just said, except for R, which I'm actually gonna release in you know maybe a month or two. So maybe when you're watching this, I already have the R series out there, but I have full tutorials on MySQL and Microsoft SQL Server, on Excel, on Power BI, on Tableau, on Python, and other things as well. And so I have tons of free stuff, or if you want my full courses, I have those on analystbuilder.com. So you can go and check those out as well. They just go more in depth. So those are the skills that you need. Let's jump into the next thing, which is what companies actually hire healthcare analysts? Now, believe it or not, there are a ton of companies within the healthcare world and they all do different things. They all work with different types of data. And so I'm gonna kind of just throw a ton of stuff at you and you can go and do your own research because there's so many companies out there. Let's start with working at an actual hospital. Healthcare analysts are often hired within the actual hospital to work directly with nurses and doctors and you know the data team within that company. And you'll be within a hospital and you'll see these doctors every single day. So this could be something like the Mayo Clinic or Johns Hopkins or just your local hospital. It's very common for even smaller local hospitals to have some type of small data team. Now these hospitals are typically gonna work with patient data very directly. So you're gonna kind of be aggregating and looking at patient data as a whole. You may also work with the operations of the hospital. So how many beds do we actually have open? How many rooms? When are there peak times during the day or during the week or during the year? And you can create dashboards that people can actually look at and they can say, okay, we're coming up on a really busy season. Let's hire a few more nurses or traveling nurses to be sure that we can you know, handle this amount of patients. And so you'll often work with management or the doctors and you work with a lot of patient data. Next would be insurance companies. And these should be one that most people are familiar with, especially in the United States. We have so many insurance companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Health, Cigna, Aetna, or a local one like I've mentioned before. Within these healthcare companies, healthcare analysts will typically work with something called claims data. Now I've worked with more claims data than I would ever have liked to because claims data is insane. It's just very complex, very difficult, and there's so much of it. And that's why they hire healthcare analysts because it's kind of tough to work with. And so to give you an example of how claims data works, let's say I go to a hospital and I have to get a surgery. Well, that doctor is going to note that you perform this surgery and they're gonna bill your insurance. That's this insurance company over here. So when they bill the insurance, the insurance is going to either approve or deny, but it's gonna create a claim saying, hey, you owe this hospital X amount of money. 
And so they can either deny it or they approve it. But let's say they approve it and they send that money back to the doctor that they owe them. I then, of course, need to pay my copay or I need to pay my deductible to make sure that the insurance company gets however much money I'm supposed to be paying. But it's a very convoluted system and it's very complex. And so that is something that a lot of data, a lot of insurance companies hire analysts for. The next type of company that hires a lot of healthcare analysts is going to be pharmaceutical companies. That's gonna include companies like Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, or a ton of others, because there's so many pharmaceutical companies out there. These companies will actually research and develop drugs, and they'll produce them, and then they ship them out, and they make a lot of money from that. And so they have to require a lot, an immense amount of data you would not believe. Now, I actually got to work with Johnson & Johnson and a few of these other companies on a lot of clinical trials. I got to work specifically with the doctors and the data teams doing some double blind studies to look at the efficacy of some of these drugs. So I have a lot of hands-on knowledge of this area. And the data would often be looking at, okay, we're taking this drug, let's just say a really simple example. We're looking at Tylenol. Tylenol, we wanna make a different variation of it. So let's create it and let's start giving it to a certain population of people. The other population will just give maybe the regular one. And then we wanna compare and we wanna see how did this drug perform? Was it better? Was it worse? Uh, did, were there different side effects? There's all this data that's being collected and you work with data engineers and data scientists and data analysts and everybody to work together to figure out if this is actually a really good drug that's helping people or it is not. Next would be something like a government agency. One that I think most people would know of is the World Health Organization, but within your country or within your city or whatever, there's gonna be lots of smaller health organizations that do with you know, county health or your state health or your country's health or something like the World Health Organization, which covers a lot of different countries. For example, the World Health Organization tracks a lot of different diseases. And one that I've used in the past as an example is something like malaria. That is something that they track really closely because if malaria is to spread, especially a lot of countries, it affects a lot of people. And so they track an immense amount of data on malaria. Now they do have systems in place to collect this data, but those things are often monitored by healthcare analysts. They want to make sure that the data that's coming in is accurate and clean and is used in order to really closely track if it's spreading into different areas, if there's higher concentrations in specific areas, and they need more vaccines or shots in that area. And so this is very active and kind of living data that they're working with to help really control a lot of different diseases or different things that are happening around the world. Now we're about to jump into some projects and some things on your resume that I would recommend. But when it comes to projects and building kind of these personal projects you can add to your resume to make you more attractive to employers, one thing I'm gonna tell you, and this is kind of like the secret sauce that some people talk about, some people don't. I really want you to know this. It's kind of on the same line of having that EHR system on your resume. Having these specific things on your resume is also a big, big boost. This is gonna be coding and classification data. And at every single company that I've ever worked with, I've even done consulting outside of it, they all use this type of data. And this is very, very, very important for you to understand, is that this is used at every single stage of the healthcare process. It's ICD codes, CPT codes, LOINT codes, HICS-PICS codes, all these different types of codes are things that are used through the entire process of working with healthcare data. The two that I would specifically look into, and these are the ones that I worked with the most, are ICD codes, so these are codes that help identify different diseases and procedures. They used to be ICD-10 codes, but they updated to ICD-11 codes. So if you want to kind of dive into the diagnosis and the medical stuff, that is 100% where you should start. That is the best place to start. The next one is CPT codes. These are used for tracking procedures and services. So if you go into a hospital and you just check in, they're gonna say, hey, this person checked into the hospital, that's a CPT code. Or hey, they went in to get a colonoscopy, that's a CPT code. It's not a diagnosis, it's not saying you have you know, colon cancer, that would be an ICD-11 code. And there's a very specific code. Now in the next lesson in the series, I'm gonna be diving into the real data and I will look at ICD codes, HICSPIX codes, CPT, LOINC, and I will talk about how those are used, what those look like, and what you need to know. So that's in the next lesson where I dive into the actual healthcare data and I think that's gonna be a really fun one for me. So when you're looking at your resume, let's say you have no healthcare experience and you don't have a degree in it and you haven't worked at a 
a hospital before. Something that you can do is you can build projects with this data. So I would go online, I'd try to find some patient data, whether that's on Kaggle or that's on you know, Google data search, or you can find it on data.gov and you can find real healthcare data there. I would try to find something that has those types of codes in it, CBT or ICD codes, because you can specifically mention that in your project on your resume. And I promise you, they're gonna be like, wow, okay, what do you know about ICD codes? What do you know about CPT codes? We use that all the time here. Tell me about that. Cause they want somebody who already knows that cause that stuff is complicated and it can be very easy on surface, but it gets very, very challenging when you really start using it. And so building out a project and putting that on your resume, 100% recommend. I think that is a fantastic, fantastic thing to do. Now I'm not gonna be diving into creating a full kind of healthcare analyst resume. I have separate full videos on how to create a data analyst resume. And I would basically take that resume and that template that I have in that video and just apply some of the things that we've talked about in this one, which is including ICD, CPT, you know, those codes that we talked about as well as EHR system. And if you have any experience, be sure to mention that. That is what I would do, but go and watch. I'll have a link down below, or you can just search Alex the Analyst Data Analyst Resume resume, it will come up, but definitely create a really good resume that is healthcare oriented for healthcare analyst positions. So if you followed those steps, you know the skills, you've looked at EHR systems, you looked at the CPT and ICD codes, uh, you've added those to your resume, you're ready to go. Here's what I would do is I would look at local companies that are healthcare related and reach out to them, try to apply to local healthcare companies. I wouldn't go big and start applying to like really big companies. You can, there's nothing against that but you're gonna have better luck if you're finding something local. I just, in this market, I found that to be true. You can also reach out to the recruiters at those companies and you can send them your resume. You can say, hey, I'm looking for you know jobs in healthcare analytics. I think your company is great, but make sure that they are all healthcare related because they're not really gonna hire healthcare analytics outside of healthcare companies like we discussed in this video. If you want a lot more advice on how to land interviews and then also nail those interviews, I have tons of videos on how to do that. Because again, I was once a data analyst just starting out and then I was also hiring at one point. And so I know both sides of it. So I feel like I have some pretty good advice on how to nail those interviews. So I hope that that was helpful. I talked about a ton of stuff, even the kind of the secret sauce behind it that I think is really important that not a lot of people will mention or talk about, specifically the EHR systems and the codings like Hixpix and Loink and CPT and ICD. I think if I had known about those back in the day, I would have been able to get a job in healthcare or healthcare analytics much faster but I didn't. And so I'm trying to help mentor you. I try to help teach you some of the things that I've learned over my you know, six or seven years in healthcare analytics. And I really do hope that you use it and that is very helpful to you. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.